Alright, welcome back to another Hero Spotlight, and we are back at it again with the Monarch Hero decks. I'll be representing Shadow again, and today we'll be playing Chain, a Shadow Room Room Blade. Joining me again will be Carol, and what are you playing, Carol? Um, today I will be representing Light again, and this time with Illusionist, um, which I'm really excited to showcase to you guys, because this is a completely new class that's been introduced to Monarch. Um, it is also uh, a light class like Bolton, and it also um, utilizes the soul like um, as in, in the theme of light. So hopefully I get to showcase that. All right, let's, let's roll the dice. All, All right, right. Your I will choose to go first. Okay. Now, um, Prism as an illusionist creates these illusions, which are these really powerful attacks that can be dispelled or destroyed by um, attacks that um, with power six or more. So hopefully I get to showcase that. Attacks and that are real enough to break your illusion? Yeah, that aren't scared of my illusions. Um, but yeah, also utilizing um, the divine shields and other auras to gain an advantage. Let's have a look at my hand. What am I working with? Okay. What I'm gonna do here is Okay, let's start off by popping my Halo of Illumination, which lets me put a card into my soul, and because it's a light card, I get to draw a card. Okay. And I will just get started with my auras, and I'll create three spectral shields. All right, that's a pretty good start. And since both those abilities was an instant, you still have an action point if you choose to use it. True. I will, I will just ask you and pass it to you. All right. Now, with, with Chain, he is a shadow hero, and much like other rune blades, Chain cares about attack actions and non-attack actions, and also travels in dueling arcane damage as well as actual physical attacks. But now, the shadow side, so... We're going to be dealing with the Banished Zone in, in a different way from Leviah, and we're probably just going to get started straight away. I'm going to also be using my Evenfold, and this is going to let me banish a card from my hand, and since it's Shadow, I'm going to draw a card. Now you may be wondering, why am I putting that card there? Well, when I play Chain, most of Chain's um, cards, the Shadow Rumor cards, I can play it from the Banished Zone, and to make it a little bit visually easier for both me and my opponent, I'm going to be putting the cards that I can be playing from the Banished Zone a little bit closer to the combat chain. Yeah, it's really handy to uh, see what you've got there. Alright, we're going to be making a Soul Shackle. What a Soul Shackle does is at the beginning of my action phase, I'm going to banish the top card of my deck. Now, the Soul Shackle stays in play, and eventually we're going to get into a stage where I'm going to have too many Soul soul shackles and i'm gonna have to pay the cost of um getting this advantage now but that's a that's like a tomorrow problem for me <laughs> now now okay. now with chain what this also lets me do by making a soul shackle is my next attack gets go again so we're going to attack with piercing shadow vice and this has go again now if i doubt i can damage you just turn this attack will get bigger but unfortunately it's just stealing you four but let's get those pesty spectral shields out of the way. Okay, so it's coming in for four. I will defend for three. Alright, so you're going to take one. You have spectral shields, so instead of taking one, you must destroy spectral shields. And now it's gone. One damage. Yep. And even though he had three spectral shields, the way the preventions work is he chooses the replacement effect. And he will not lose all the shields to one damage, just one of them. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to attack with my weapon, Galaxy Black. And what this is, is gets an additional plus two because I played a card from Banished Zone, which was this Piercing Shadow. Oh, and see. if this okay. hits you, you're going to take an Arcane Damage. Hmm, yeah, I'm going to defend for three as well. Alright, we're going to Arsenal, and now it's your turn. So I still have my two shields. Um, and I feel like this is where Prism's power comes in because I'm able to um, pitch a blue card, use Iris of Reality and attack you with one of my 
Spectral shields for four. All right, that, that is pretty good. I'm going to just defend this for three. I'm going to be taking one. Yep. And I'll come at you with illuminate for four as well. All right. And if this heads, it's going to go into my hero sword. All right. Now that's something I don't want to hit me. So we're going to use our battle one here. We're going to defend this one for four. Very useful to save your battle one for actually the hit triggers. Yep, sounds good. I'm um, just going to end my turn. All right, all right. Now to start a turn, it's time to pay my pay, pay my debt. Soul Shackle. We're going to be banishing the top card of my deck. Now this card does not have blood debt. Doesn't do anything for us here. We're just going to get it out of the way. And now we're going to make another Soul Shackle. This is going to let my next my next um. Room Blade or Shadow action have go again, and this includes my weapon, so we're going to be attacking you for one. Attack for one, eh? Um, I'm happy just to take that, so I, I, won't, I won't defend. Alright, so we're going to lose a Spectral Shield here. And now, since we have another action point due to go again, we're going to play Rip Through Reality. Now, if I had dealt Arcane Damage, this will get go again. One thing you're going to realise with this deck is, dealing Arcane Damage is like, very good for this deck. We gain a lot of extra effects by dealing icon damage, and that's that's what room blades do. Mm -hmm. And you may you may also notice that um, from Carol's side, he doesn't have what you guys are used to in the form of arcane barrier. But there are many ways to be preventing arcane damage, and one one way that's exclusive to his deck is spectral shields. This doesn't actually care about what damage you're dealing it will prevent our hand damage mm -hmm. and in addition you're gonna see his equipment come in handy too yeah what i might do is actually i i, I want to defend just to protect my spectral shield here. all right unfortunately we did not get it down this turn but sort it out later <laughs> oh yeah yeah um yeah what i might do is come in for seven and this this kind of showcases you the power of um phantasm attacks this only costs two resource points and it's attacking for seven and it has a nice on hit so unfortunately i don't have a six power card to yes. break your break your phantasm That's but what I wanna hear. but what i will be doing what i will be doing and luckily, Jason used up his battle wall in there. Yeah, we're going to just have to defend on three hearts. I really don't want that to hit me. Okay. Alright. Start of my action phase. Soul Shackle. And here's some goodies. We have hit two cards that have blood debt. But can you play those out? That's right. the question. Can I? All right. We are going to create a soul shackle. And this means my nets will get go again. And we will attack for Galaxy Black. So this has go again. It's coming in for one. Yep. Do I want to keep my spectral shield around? Now, dealing one here, it may not seem like a lot, but now he has to choose between losing a special shield or investing another card. Mm. Let's, hmm. Let's think about this. You know what? I won't defend. Alright, we'll I'll kill your special. Now, you may think, oh yay, I have some cards I can play from Banishon, let's play them out immediately. But that may not always be the case, and I'm choosing not to be playing out these seeds and refine it, even though I could this turn. However, that doesn't mean I have to pay the debt. So we're going to lose two life going down to 17 because I have two cards in my banish zone with blood debt. Jason's setting up. This is scary. But at the beginning of my action phase, I've got a little surprise for you. I'm going to reveal um, the librarian. Oh, the what, what's the that card? I've never seen life. that before. Um, so these um, starting blitz blitz decks have illusion. The each hero has their own mentor with um, unique abil abilities that lets uh, you basically teaches your hero, your young hero, how to um, 
how to do what they do in that class and lets you get a specialization class once you kind of reach the goal of the lessons. So um, my one lets me draw a card whenever I create a spectral shield. So let's start that off. And one really cool thing about these mentors is you can't play them out as like normal cards. You can't pitch with them. Mm -hmm. you, ha you have to take your time as with mentoring and get it into your arsenal first and then turn it over. But man, is it powerful. Yep. So because I've created a spectral shield, I get to draw a card and get my first counter. And now it has a lesson counter. Just two more and you're off to the races. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's let's pitch another blue and attack you with my spectral shield. All right, um, it's a little bit annoying. All right, we're going to defend this one for free. That means I take one out of sixteen. Mm hmm. Sounds good. Now, that's the tricky thing about playing Illusionist is I have to work out, does my opponent have a card with six or more power? Because if I attack, um, the Phantasm ability just destroys my attack there and there. And um, even if my attacks have go again, uh, it will just close the chain and my turn will end. One thing to really pay attention to is whether or not your opponent ends the turn with a card in their hand. Mm -hmm. Last turn I played every card in my hand, so I drew four new cards. So whether or not I have a six power card is completely at the mercy of my deck. Mm -hmm. But if I had like held a card in my hand, I only drew three cards, Harold might think, oh, he's more likely to have a six power card and then he might actually want to be popping Dreamweavers. Yeah, exactly. Dreamweavers is a nice little get out of jail free card that um yeah, that I might actually use here. Okay. I use my Dream Weavers, and my next attack loses Phantasm. Oh, so and it's a real attack now. Just trying to sneak in some damage here. Alright, I don't think this is the one that you are trying to get through. Maybe it is. Alright, we're not going to... We're not going to defend this card, so we're going to take 3 damage, go down to 13. Alright, now it's now it's time to see whether my opponent does have the 6 power card or not. Alright, this card is Dominate. Um, so, lucky for you, I actually do not have, yes. have a 6 power card. We're going to just defend for 3 since it's Dominate, and we're going to go down to 10. This card goes into your soul. Yep, that's good. Okay. Okay. All right, the start of my turn, the Soul Shackle, we have three to pay, so first one's good, it's a Rift Bind, second one, Sleeping Shadows, third one, all right, so all of our cards here now have, um, now can be played from the Banish Zone, they also have Blood Debt, so I better get them out of there fast. It's this the turn. All right, we're going to... We are going to start our turn. We're playing How From Beyond from my hand, and then we'll also play Seas of Agony. What How From Beyond does is my next attack gets plus three power, and what Seas of Agony does is my next attack with that costs two or less is going to have deal one arc hand damage. So we're really utilizing our next attack and dealing more damage with our next attack. Mm -hmm. And we will then play Rift. Uh, we're gonna also we're gonna make a soul shackle before we do this. Mm -hmm. We'll make a soul shackle, and then we're gonna play rift bind, and this means rift binds go again. But not only that, it's gonna have plus three from the howl from beyond. But rift bind, if I'm played it from a um, banish zone, it will get plus X. Wait, X is the amount of non attack actions I played this turn. Which, as you can see, there are two additional ones. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be attacking you for 8. It's also going to deal 1 arcane damage due to the Seeds of Agony. Now, should I pop my spell free leggings or not? Hmm. So my opponent doesn't have any resources left. Hmm. But then they do have go again. Very interesting. 
what I might do is if I take the one, my spectral shield dies. But I do have the spell fray leggings. Yeah, let's just try and hmm. Do we want to try and potentially? I'll, I'll prevent the one. Yeah, I'll yeah. prevent the one I can. Spell fray is extremely powerful. You may first try to compare them to either either like blade or break iron rot equipment or maybe arcane barrier but they're, they're actually like quite different so this is the first time we actually have anything that can prevent arcane damage but also you do not have to pay for it and that is a massive tempo swing not ha being able to prevent damage and not sink any resources into it mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go ahead and block it for uh, defend for nine. All right, so we know our opponent's really trying to protect the special shield. He's most likely just going to be dealing some damage to me next turn. And now my question lies: Do I want to be investing my ether iron weave to do get some damage through? And what we're actually going to do is we're going to close this chain, as I'm going to mm -hmm. use a action, and we're going to use. Use Aether Iron Weave, and because I've played a non attack and an attack action, we get two resources, and we're gonna play this Piercing Shadow Fighters from the um, from the Banish Zone. Unfortunately, it's only dealing you two damage because I haven't done arcane damage, mm. but now it's gonna be either lose the card in your hand or lose your special shield. Interesting. I think I might take a bit of a gamble here. I think I will, yeah, I'm going to activate my hero ability. Alright, well I'm hoping you don't draw a card that has defense. <laughs> yeah, exactly, come on, oh yeah, I also get a count here. Yeah, he draw and he draws the card from the Liberian, the Liberian giving Cow lots of advantage. All right, so at the end of my turn, I'm going to have to pay the debt. So I'm just I'm keeping these cards for later, and that's costing me two life, putting me down to eight. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just going to draw up and pass. All right, so I'll shackle it four. Let's see what we got. All right, so three of these cards don't actually have any abilities, so we're going to just put them into the banished zone. All right, let's see what we got. I'm going to start pitching the four to play Seeping Shadows from my Banish Zone. And this, mm -hmm. my next attack will cost one or less, that's plus one. And go again, which I'm immediately going to then play my Ghostly. Visit. So this is attacking you for five, and it has to go again. Five, eh? Interesting. Maybe I am gonna have to lose my spectral shield after all. Hmm. Okay, I'll defend it for six here. All right, we're going to close our combat chain. And this is so that I can make a soul shackle. Mm -hmm. And we are going to attack with Galaxy Black for free. So the combat chain's closed. Yeah, and this attack has go again. This attack has go again. I still have one resource left. Hmm. And you've played one non-attack non action? I have played one non-attack action, which was a seeping soul, mm -hmm. seeping shadows. You know what? I think um, I think it's time to put some pressure on. I'm just gonna. I, I won't defend. All right. So you're gonna lose both your special shields. You're gonna take one, and then we're gonna do one arcane damage to you. Yep. And now we are going to play Rift Bind, and this is just for two damage. No, no defense. All right. You take two. Yep. And we are going to in the turn and this time we do not have any blood debt so yeah hmm. now this is the scary bit because 
Jason hasn't used the card in his hand, which is actually whenever you're playing Illusionist, if a, if your opponent is holding a card, it's probably um, a sign that it is a six power attack. But you have to take chances in this game. So let's see if if he's got it. All right. So I did hold a card in my hand. I chose not to just play out all my cards because I wanted to keep one more card in my hand. And this is the last card I kept in my hand. And when a when a phantasm deals with an attack action that sits more power, well, since my attack's actually real, there it goes. It goes pop. It's not afraid of my illusionist attack. It no. knows it's it's just an illusion. All right, soul shackle time, and there goes my mentor. There goes my specialization. <laughs> this is the cost you're paying. You're getting rid of some very good cards. Yeah, and look at that. Look at that. He's uh, running out of cards. I just uh, have to wait it out a little bit and I'm good to go. I'm not worried. <laughs> you just have to deal 16 damage in like two turns. I'm okay. not worried. All right. All right. We are going to... Play out... Seeds of Agony. We are then going to make a Soul Shackle. And we're going to play out Rift Bind. So since so this is going in due to um chain's ability. Mm -hmm. And this is also four power and it's the only one arcane damage. Hmm, and does this benefit from that? It does. Oh well, I guess. Can't really prevent that, so I'll be taking the. Yeah, I'll I'll defend for five and, and take one arcane damage. Yeah. Not ideal, but it is what it is. All right, we are. So I'm going to play consuming volition from my hand. And since I've got arcane damage this turn, if this hits you, you're gonna have to discard a card. What? That's not cool. Okay, I. I will. I won't defend. We're going to snap dragon scalers and give this card go again. Yep, so I take four. Yep, and then you discard a card. Yep, I'll discard a card. Okay, so you really wanted to keep the last card in this hand. So it's probably an attack because of cross straps. So this is a very this is a very interesting scenario here. Even though I gave that card even though I gave Snapdragon Scales Gogan and my intention here was to play out this piercing shadow, there is a very strong chance that Carol is going to be using cross straps into another attack. Now for our viewers at home you're gonna see what cards in my hand. So I have to make a decision here on whether or not against illusionists I want. So there's a lot of attacks that will attack me for seven and it's gonna be quite scary. I'm gonna actually make not an orthodox play of just even though I pop snap dragon scalers, with his discard fence has changed. I thought he had two cards that didn't defend in his hand. Clearly he did not. I'm going to just pass the turn and lose one to blood debt. <sighs> Jason is trying to psych me out here. <laughs> but you know what? You might know my play. And you might be playing around it. But I have to go for it at this point. Alright. Now, if I had if I had pitched this Lunatide Plunderer oh, no. to, to, um, <laughs> to attack with Six of the Shadow Vies, I would have had to sacrifice three cards here. But instead, I just have to lose one card and we're popping the Phantasm. Oh my goodness. We do not want him to get a special shield because not only that, it would also pop off his mentor. Yeah, and this is a really good play by Jason because I was actually pitching my specialization the turn before just to make sure it's still still in here. So, um, yeah. Alright, Soul Shackle, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This. So mm. this one we can't play, but there is a variety of cards that we can play. We can just group them in what they are. Okay. What do we have here? We're going to begin by playing out two seeds of Ebony's. 
and then can he do it can i do it yeah at this point jason's running out of um cards so hopefully i can just stall out enough till um so he can't do anything else so let's see if that's possible well we'll try and not let you do that but we're <laughs> going to make a soul shackle and then we are going to play the person shadow we'll go again mm, and that's pinging me once. only for once yeah. because the other one only works if i play an attack with that costs one or less okay okay so it's yeah i will take the two pains uh the one, one pain ping. and since i've done damage now this power is now sits power mm. so these abilities that um if you have doubt arcane damage it doesn't matter if you've doubt arcane damage at the time you play it it's not as you play it matters basically when it does matter which is who matters yeah so I, I'll relevant. Want, um i'll i'll take the one ping and then i'll defend for five so yep. i'm taking one more all right and now since we since now we have played now since we have done damage to you i'm going to again play rip through reality from my arsenal it's been there since yesterday and mm. we're going to attack you for four i'll declare no defense all right take four yeah down to five i had to go again because i've dealt art hand damage and now I'll attack you for free here with my life. Oh, it's gonna deal one arcane damage if I don't defend, but I'll I'll take the risk. I'm gonna take it. Okay, you're down to one, and now this is when it's gonna be a little bit relevant on the stacking of my deck. I'm going to actually be wanting to keep probably just rough bind as the last card, as we know it's going to get banished with the mm -hmm. soul shackle. All right, it's your turn. Sweet, so blood debt kicks in. And we take three to go down to four life. Mm -hmm. And luckily I drew another Herald of Protection. So hopefully now at this point you do not have a six power attack. I do not have a six power attack. But what I, what I can be doing, however, is I can just be defending normally. Oh. So let's just defend normally for seven. Sounds good. All right. Um, I turn. We're going to banish this. We don't have any more cards to banish with Soul Shackle, but in this game, if you don't have a deck size, you do not lose the game. So it is fine. Now I just have to pray a little bit. We're going to make a Soul Shackle and attack with Rift of Torment. Off go again so this is going to deal you um one, one arcane. arcane but do you have a way to stop my arcane damage that is a very good question i cannot i can't was, stop it that was a very Take close one. game and well as you and, and as you can see if i didn't kill him here well the the soul shackles is really gonna catch up to me and i'm just not gonna be able to play play any more fab and this was the card that you actually made sure that you were gonna banish right yeah i mean i did also have some blue ones available to me but but as with as with most decent fab but in particular chain you're gonna see your entire deck and it's really important what you put in your banish zone and you want to pitch these blues that you can play with your banish zone early that mm -hmm. you actually want to banish later on maybe even sometimes reds cool but that was a really that was a really good game Carol. yeah i was i was glad i was glad that i could r represent the illusionist and do my thing